everyone. Uh, this is my colleague Francisco and I'm Arajula. Uh, we are junior engineers from CERN. Uh, today we're going to talk about our story, how we crashed our way into production. So before I start a great interaction about CERN, uh, as you all know, we are a, uh, the largest physics laboratory. Uh, we primarily deal with research on subatomic particles and questions like how is the universe born, dark matter and stuff. And this is also a place where the internet was born. And we don't, we don't just do physics, we do a lot more than that. So at CERN, everything is service-based. So the bit interaction is like we are a community of more than 18,000 people with around uh, 12,000 plus scientists from around uh, 110 nationalities. So we are a huge community. So it's, it's obvious that we, everything is like a service. Uh, like say, uh, the grass outside my office window is a lot. You want to get it trimmed, we just create a service ticket. So it's like that, everything is a service. And the same with IT. So every IT service is provided as a service with a different team. So we primarily deal with websites, like all the public facing websites. So we have around 1500 plus websites. So like for example, the homepage, the home.cern, the most visited page uh, on our infrastructure, or the careers.cern, or visits.cern, just a bit, the uh, advertisement, the, the visits are open at CERN. You can also visit, uh, book a visit on the website. So I'm going to give it to my colleague to talk about our story. Okay, so starting our story, I'm going to start with our team. As my colleague said, we are the content management systems infrastructure. So we're mostly responsible for the websites. Um, and in this case, I'm going to make the story more uh, of in a funny way. So our story is for Amigos which are responsible for this CMS uh, service. And uh, they have at hands a physical infrastructure, so an old way of deploying websites. And their mission is to go into the clouds. So first, they create a plan. So we designed and built our own operators, and we also integrated them with external services. We, as we can see here, we. Um, integrated with authorization, uh, with the CFFS the service, database, etc. So the team starts climbing the stairs to clouds. But they get blocked. They get blocked by a creature. And this creature is called Ceph. So what, what, wait, yeah. So what happened with Ceph? With Ceph, uh, the Ceph services started uh, noticing that we were creating a, a lot of load on their service and they were complaining, but we were not aware of that. So they give us these fancy plots showing that we are creating a lot of requests every 10 minutes uh, that m is affecting their service. So um, after a, a lot of uh, conversation they, uh, and a request from them to, to try to do everything so we don't shut their service down, we noticed that in our service we have a few pods uh, that are in infinite rollouts and uh, another few ones that are in crash loop backoffs. So as soon as we stop those, we can see that the loads disappeared. So now we already have, let's say, an, uh, an idea of what could, can be wrong. So after uh, a little bit more of investigation with uh, the CFFS team, we noticed that uh, uh, the um, CoreOS uh, kernel Sorry, uh, yes. When uh, we are mounting persistent volumes into a node, the node is relabeling all files. So if we have big persistent volumes, we're going through a lot of files and relabeling the, them all. So this was, in fact, what was creating this huge workload. So how did we handle the monster? We created a merge request upstream as well with an issue to explain what was the problem and then fix the solution. So now that our first block is out of the way, we continue our climb into the clouds. And now we get frozen by the kernel. Yeah, so we're now blocked by the new monster with kernel freezes. So all of a sudden, uh, our worker nodes have kernel freezes and they go into a not ready state. So we don't have downtime, but it is still affecting us because a lot of nodes were being restarted and recycled. So, after a bit of investigation, as usual, we started wondering what is the problem. So we spoke to other services like the OpenStack team, uh, the network team, and all. But 
we couldn't find uh, any uh, clue from them. So after a bit more investigation, we started seeing something upstream. So we started seeing that in the latest version of OKD that ships with the kernel, the specific kernel version had a bug. So the Fedora OS kernel has a bug which was causing the nodes to restart. And this was not visible in every cluster and it depended on the workload. So we could see it on, on our clusters because of our workload. And then uh, we, we figured out uh, that we could, uh, from a comment and from the same issues, that by downgrading to a specific minor version, the problem could be fixed until the OKD ships with a better, the fixed kernel version. And we were able to actually fix it, mitigate it by changing the kernel version. Uh, just to note that, it's, it's so cool that even though it's not downtime, but uh, through a discussion with some strangers talking about so solutions that could help us fix an issue that we've been struggling for days. So we start continuing our journey. And all of a sudden the stairs are going down faster than actually going up. And we start wondering, are we actually going slow? So we started re getting multiple uh, uh, requests, uh, uh, reports saying that uh, we have degraded performance on all our websites and all the infrastructure. So we start wondering, uh, as usual, we start uh, seeing what is the issue. We give more resources, we give more replicas, we start optimizing the infrastructure as much as we can. And we check with database team, network team, and storage team, and they all confirmed, yes, it, it's all fine from our side. But after a while, we started using more debugging tools, and then we figured out we had an imposter. So the database service that was providing us was degraded and there was a bottleneck, which even they didn't know. So, uh, yeah, after a bit more investigation, uh, after talking to the, the other database teams, uh, they moved us to a specific infrastructure where the bottleneck was reduced and we had good performance like we wanted. And we start continuing our journey. We almost close. And now we lost the backup probes. So Velero is a very uh, major component in our, in our uh, infrastructure where we want to take backups through Velero and we want to take stateful backups through Restic. So we have, because we have more than 1500 websites, we wanted to take a backup of every website once a day. So we have 1500 plus backups created through schedules. And each backup took five minutes because uh, of the number of files on the PVC. And, and you can do a simple calculation. We can only do like around 300 backups per day. So because of this, we started having a huge amount of backlog. And if you are aware, Velero Restic controller processes only one custom resource at a time. There's, it doesn't do parallel, it's sequential. And then we try to mitigate it. We maybe reduce the backup to once every two days. So we have only a few uh, every day. And then we start seeing more issues upstream. It's, uh, there are, we were discussing and want to uh, contribute or do whatever we can to get this fixed. Uh, while we were also waiting uh, from our CFFS team where they could provide CFFS snapshots on the PVC where you don't have to use uh, Velero. And before we could actually uh, fix the problem, the problem disappears. So we found that we had a bug in our database script, uh, in our backup script, which reduced the amount of time taken for a backup from five minutes to less than a minute. And overnight, all our backlog disappeared. So the next day morning, we could create on-demand backups. Like, and then we had to investigate to understand why the backup log disappeared. But we still plan to uh, get this feature, which helps us and also uh, everyone in the community. And I give it to my colleague. <laughs> yeah, so by now, and after all these crashings along the way, we finally reach the clouds, but the process is not over yet. So looking back, we started on physical machines. We prepared, prepared our, our way into the cloud, so we cre created all the components necessary to, to provision it in the cloud, so, as, such as the integrations with the other components and the other services. Then we moved into the cloud, which is where we are at now. But now we still need to better monitor our resources, our workload, and we still need to do some continuous improvements in uh, the current infrastructure to make it better, better performant, etc. So by now, we can ask ourselves, what did the travelers learn? So the travelers learn quite a few things. 
starting with uh, the collaboration. So with the collaboration with Upstream uh, and also with our colleagues, we were able to tackle a lot of, a lot of these problems. Um, and these problems are beneficial not only for us, but they are also beneficial to the community. So some of the things that we found are now, can, can now be used as well from the other colleagues uh, on the community. Um, a second problem is that some issues are inevitable. So even if we had everything planned, even if everything in our site worked correctly as we initially thought it would, uh, then we still have issues that are out of our control that continue to help, uh, to, to happen. So we, we made a few pr proof of concepts. We didn't go into the point of having work like, work like workloads, but still things fail because of Linux kernel bugs, etc. As a third point, going too fast. As a third point, no CNCF project is robust out of the box by itself to every use case. Sometimes it's required to have some patience, some energy, and some contributions like we did to make it work. And, and finally, uh, it's, it's uh, important to be mindful about dependencies. So in our case, we had some issues uh, with our service because we were not fully aware of the extent of, of the dependencies and how they could affect us uh, negatively our service. 